What is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're actually doing some big stuff to my E36 Tourer. This is actually the 3036 that I bought last year back in, I think it was April. I bought three of these at one time. One of them uh, was sold to my friend Chris Saint and uh, the other one is the silver one that I've been working on. This is the last one. So this is my E36. Right now it is a 323 Auto SE. So we are going to be doing a massive, massive conversion on this car. So we've got a 2.8 with a ZF5 speed that's going in it, full M Sport black leather interior and M Sport front and rear bumpers too. So the past few nights, me, Aaron and Mohsen have been working stripping down two E36s. Both of them had uh, 2.8 manuals in them uh, and both of them had the good gearboxes as well but we've been busy getting those cars stripped down, scrapped and out of the way. Full engine swap that came out of one of the cars this is going to obviously need to be tidied up. We've got the engine was pretty much ready to just fall out of that car. It wasn't really held in place at all. The mounts weren't in it was just kind of held in with the subframe, hence the reason why we dropped the entire subframe from on this one, which is why we've still got the coilovers and stuff on it. But we've got a lot of parts here which are going to be transferred over onto this. We've got the clutch, the pedal box, uh, the manual speedo as well. That's all ready to go. The plan for tonight is just to get the engine and box out of this car, put beside this engine and box so that we can transfer things over which need to be transferred over and then we'll be ready to chuck it in the car tomorrow fingers crossed everything goes to plan and it's time to get to work So after all of that, we're now at the point where we're loosening off the starter motor. Once that's one, well, once those two E12s are out, we'll smack that off, and we can take off the E14s, which hold the gearbox in place. And once the gearbox is out, I think we go back to the top side, disconnect everything from the engine bay, and then we can get the engine in. pretty boring it's pretty much just tidying things up so obviously we've got the engine out and the old gearbox is there this is what we're working with today we're going to obviously be tidying this up taking off what we don't need and if we need to move anything over from there over to here we will be doing so there might not actually be a lot to do with that however we also need to tidy up some areas on the car and while the car is up in the air we'll be replacing the fuel filter as well now we're at the point where we're fitting or putting clutch line in place and then we'll deal with the pedal box after once I've gotten into the interior so it looks like there is a hole that hole there which is where the one end of the clutch line will go through that into obviously the inside of the car 
and the rest of the line should run along here and the other end of it will be the slave cylinder which will be in the tunnel on the other side of the gearbox. As you can see there, you can maybe see the light through that hole there. That's the upper one which the braided kind of hose goes through and then underneath that we have the other one which you can kind of see there. But basically you just take off those covers from the sort of sound deadening, right? And then there are plastic caps which you just pop off. They have essentially just got like blanking pieces. So all you've got to do is literally just rip it out of place. Which you can kind of see in here. That light is about to die. But yeah, you can see there that top one. That's been pulled out of place. And then this bottom one. Can we see it? Yeah, that one. We'll just pull that out now. There we go. Done. And that's it. So that's it ready for the. Oh, God. Ready for the clutch lines to go in. Alright, guys, that's us at the point now where we're finally ready to get this engine in the bay. Um, I'm hoping we are also going to get the gearbox in because Mosin is currently working on removing the old shifter and the sort of boot surrounding it. Mosin, how are you getting on? Uh, in that part. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's a, that's a shifter, yeah. Yeah, that's an automatic shifter, yeah. So that's what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got all of this to work through. And whatever parts are needed from there, we can get that sort of put in place. Hopefully get the engine plumbed in, wired in, so that's all done and out of the way. So, this is 2.8. We ended up swapping looms over from the 2.5 onto this one because the loom that came off of it had some previous repairs that looked a bit questionable. Actually, yeah, it's got arrow much way forward. Oh, yeah, it's literally tiny. All right, okay, two notches. Oh, it's in. Oh, is that your finger? Yeah. Yes, that's the one. Right guys, we're done for another night. Didn't manage to get as far as we wanted to, however we did still get a lot done. So as you saw, we've got the engine and gearbox in, everything under the car is done. So we have, uh, radiator is in, gonna get that, oh, pipes are in as well. Radiator's in totally, brilliant. That's one thing done. Uh, cables for the terminal are on. That part of the loom is in place, no idea what it does, I just know that it's in place. Uh, the uh, aircon lines are attached. So yeah, I mean we're kind of firing on, it's just, that's all obviously in place there. Power steering, reservoir, pump, all done. That's as far as we're going to take it with this E36. We might be able to come back tomorrow and hopefully we can maybe get a start. Alright guys, we're getting quite far with this E36 now. Uh, it's actually been a couple of days later, uh, but luckily the car's still on the ramp. They didn't actually need it yesterday, so I've got time today to work on it. So managed to f pretty much finish everything in the engine bay and everything underneath the car. Obviously there's still no exhaust, I need to buy myself one of them. But at the moment I'm just messing around getting... Well, finishing off the job that Mosin was doing, which is uh, fitting the 
Paddle board. I am gonna use this pin, this spring, and this clip to get us a functioning brake pedal. Okay, so the reason why these are such a nightmare is because the pin only goes in one way. If we can see it. If we can see it. I'm not sure. Yes, so here we have the pin. It needs to come in the other side of this. So once this goes in, it needs to go through the servo. This is so hard to do with one hand. And there we go. It's done. It's in. So one thing to note when putting that pin in is this is gonna have to go sideways. Apologies. But you see here, we've got this. This is your brake switch. So the flat part, flat part of this pin needs to go against that. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass, but if you can get a lever in to kind of pull, push this backwards, it allows you to spin this into place. Once that is done, then, sorry, back to normal orientation. Get the, the spring in on that side first, so on the pin side first, and use some long nose pliers to pull that backwards and in there to the, to the other side on the pedal box. As you can see, we've just plugged in an ECU, plugged in the relay as well that sits there. Uh, everything is pretty much all buttoned up, all the plugs are in, check sensors and stuff, double checked everything. So we should be good to go. There's enough engine and oil for us to start it. We need to change the battery because the one that's in it is dead anyway. But I'm gonna fill up the coolant and uh, we'll leave the cap off and hopefully we can let it run and top it off as we go. Uh, but right, let's get this done and then we can see if it'll stop. plugs here, two pins of these need to be bridged in order to bypass the sort of auto module in a way. So I think it's the blue black needs to be bridged to green yellow, I think. Can't remember 100% but we'll find out. Which ones need to be bridged again? I don't know, that's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> Shit, right, okay, I had it here. Fuck. Next problem is ECU. Okay, so it's turning over now, which is something. Right, so we bridged the black and brown and the green and white cables, right? Yeah. So that's what allowed it to turn over. Right, gonna have a look, see if I can see well, clean off the earth that goes from the suspension, from the engine arm underneath to the chassis. I'm gonna undo it, wire brush it, clean it up, see if that solves this problem. See a little bit closer, that's that repair I was talking about. So just the fact that it's covered in insulation tape just shows that it's been messed with before. So if we can negate that problem. Uh, new earth strap is on as well. Cleaned up the connection points on the chassis as well as uh, the engine arm as well. So hopefully that sorts it. We'll get this fitted and uh, see how we get on.
Yes! I think we're done. Uh, clutch has bled, it's working. We've chucked Adam's exhaust on it, or well, center section anyway, just to quieten it down a bit. Keep an eye on the temperature. Obviously, lack of fuel and stuff, but this is it. Right, obviously we need to tidy all this stuff up as well. My first ever manual conversion on any car. I think it's fair to call this one a success, but looking forward to the next video on this thing because we'll be cleaning it up and uh, hopefully it'll all already be MOT'd and one of the other cars will be gone so we can actually use this thing on the road. I can't wait because I've been dying to get myself inside a Tourer again. Just the convenience of having that extra space behind you in transporting car parts is going to make things so much easier because right now I'm using the DC5 for that. So this is going to make that job so much easier. Cannot wait to get this thing on the road. Anyways, thank you so much for sticking about with this whole video. It's been an absolute mission, but we got there. We're going to button this thing up and the next time you see it, hopefully it's ready for the road. Peace out. I'll see you in the next one.